You know, I don't remember the last time we made a post-game video as the second video of the day. In the NHL's so obvious attempt to not compete with the Super Bowl tomorrow, you had yourselves 14 games on tap tonight, and you had a whole bunch of these games starting at 9am PST. Like this one here between the Vancouver Canucks and the Detroit Red Wings, two of my favorite teams, my first and third favorite team, going at it in a battle for the ages because, yeah, you're going to see this again happen on Monday. That's your preview for the Rogers Arena showdown later next week. But ultimately, the Red Wings end up taking this one with a score of 5-2. to two. And I'm not going to lie to you, I missed most of this game. You see, my life is in a point now where I have a routine. I was at the gym last night until 2 a.m., pushing hard and pumping harder, and then we went to Denny's to end off the night, and I didn't get home until 3.30, 4 a.m., I think it was, so... Yeah, I wasn't really available for the first two periods of this Canucks and Red Wings game, but what we're going to do is go over the goals. I wanted to get my reactions out there to seeing what happened, as well as talk about a few storylines that I had seen popping up on my Twitter timeline when I woke up and just kind of scrolled through seeing what everybody was talking about because it was the second period intermission at that point. So let's head over to the box score real quick and talk about the Canucks and the Red Wings as the 5-2 victory comes and goes for Motown. First goal of the game is scored, oh dear, a minute into the first. Ay ay ay. Experienced Canucks hockey, ladies and gentlemen. Dylan Larkin gets his 17th from Sider and Sherratt. There you go. Everybody talks about Ben Sherratt all the time like he is the Antichrist, but he gets an assist here. Let's go over and watch the tape on this game. So there's a puck battle behind the net. Dylan Larkin takes it, centers it back to the point. Sherratt over to Sider. Cross seam pass. Ooh, Larkin with the snipe. Hey, 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 Martin, you gotta have that. That's from such a wide angle. But Dylan Larkin just one minute into the game, making it one nothing as the Canucks cannot seem to get the puck and clear their zone. Yeah, that's the story of the season now, isn't it? And I'm looking from the box score here, just seeing a lot more. Oh, that puck went right through his arm and his torso. Larkin, buddy, you can't be doing that on our guy, Spencer Martin. And then the second goal, making it 2 nothing, comes a minute after that. Oh boy, John Garrett said that the first two shots or something went in for Detroit, and it could have been 3 nothing as there was also a post hit by, I believe it was Robbie Fabry, but let's take a look at the tape on Berggren's first of the night here, one minute after that Larkin goal. So the Canucks can't hold the line. A race comes into the Vancouver zone. OEL plays it around the boards. It's picked off on the opposing half wall by Jonathan Berggren, played back to the D. Oh my goodness, Berggren sneaking in their back door, receiving the pass near the goal line, and he's able to pot it right by Spencer Martin. Another assist by Ben Sherratt in the first two minutes of the game. Sider also got one as well. But yeah, no, first two shots, first two goals. The Red Wings struck early and the Vancouver Canucks had no response until the second, where Anthony Bavillier goes out there and gets his second straight goal in as many games. Bavillier from Miller and Hughes on a potent Canucks power play that's honestly looked pretty all right the past little while here. Hughes goes over to Miller, he plays it into the middle, and Bavillier in the Bo Horvat spot ends up potting it right by. Had to take it off the skate, wasn't able to just shoot it right away like Bo Horvat is able to most of the time, but... Hey, Bavillier goes out there and gets the goal. What do you say? 2-1 hockey game at this point, and then Dylan Larkin on the power play about 10 minutes later makes it 3-1 Detroit. Let's take a look at the game tape on this one. So the Wings have it on the blue line side or centering feet. A long drive goes wide off the end boards, bounces to the side, it's played back out to the hash marks in front. Oh my goodness, what a passing play by the Wings. Back out to Dylan Larkin on the left faceoff circle. Very nice shot from him, and that beats Spencer Martin. Wow, the Canucks' body language on that play does not look good. They're all just kind of gassed. But 3-1 to one is the score by the time I turn on the TV and I start watching. There were a few other storylines that everybody was talking about. Everybody was talking about the Quinn Hughes penalty shot, wherein he kind of beat Hughes so, but he just couldn't put it in. Kind of missed the net there, nicked off the pads, I believe. There was JT Miller taking an irresponsible penalty against Olimata. He was just kind of whacking at the guy. 
And as per usual, the internet was up in flames talking about JT Miller because, you know, anytime JT does something that deserves criticism, he gets the brunt end of all the attacks online. There also was an entire story about Andre Kuzmenko getting benched, sorta, and we gotta make a video about that soon. That's not this video, we'll talk about that at a later date. But the third period kicks out, and this is where Philip Hronik makes it 4-1 to Detroit, just two minutes into the frame. Some really good puck cycling going on by the wings, eventually it's Hronik at the top of the slot, he walks in and just snipes it right by Spencer Martin. I'm starting to think that Martin isn't really all too amazing in this game. I mean, he had an 800 save percentage, what more do you need? You then had Berggren on the power play yet again, getting his second of the night and 10th on the season, making it 5-1 Detroit. And yeah, I mean, I was watching this one too. The Red Wings had some pretty good puck movement, and eventually it was Larkin who played out to Bertuzzi. Cross-crease shot that was saved, but the Red Wings keep it in. Larkin behind the goal line, out to Bertuzzi in front. He goes back post, and Berggren makes no mistake. Elias Pettersson scored himself a goal just a minute later to make it 5-2, and then things looked pretty interesting after that. Honestly, like, after the PD goal, which was a very nice shot and a rebound by Bavillier, it was kind of Vancouver's game to lose after that. Like, I know it was a 5-2 game, but for some reason, after watching the Canucks make it 5-2... After being down 5-1, to one, they actually looked pretty solid. They had a lot of puck possession, they were controlling the play, they were capitalizing on a lot of Red Wings turnovers, they just couldn't bury one. Huso, of course, had that penalty shot stop on Quinn Hughes, but he also had an in-tight breakaway stop on Petey just a few minutes after Petey made it 5-2. There was a Brock Besser chance in tight on a scrum that was not able to go. For some reason, I felt like the Canucks played a pretty strong and capitalizing game in the last few minutes of the third, but alas, they're not able to beat Huso more than once, and they end up losing 5-2. to two. I'm seeing a lot of people talk about Tyler Myers and how bad him and Stillman were in this game, and uh, yeah, I mean, I only saw a few parts of the third, but... Uh you know, the Canucks had a really good offensive shift for about two minutes or so in the Red Wing zone, just cycling it around and getting chances. That play completely died when Tyler Myers had the puck in the blue line and just shoved it into the corner. But uh, aside from that, it was a good game for the Canucks in terms of their draft standing. Pretty bad game if you were looking for some entertainment, and I guess you could say even worse game when you're talking about the fact that it started at 9 a.m. PST. But for the Wings, you had yourself some really good performances out of these guys. You love to see the multi-point games out of Ben Sherratt redeem himself and that contract that he was handed out by Steve Eiserman in the offseason. You also talk about the multiple points scored by... Jonathan Berggren, two goals for him. Very nice to see Dylan Larkin had two goals and an assist, so he was on the score sheet. Villa Huso, at least from what I saw, played out of his mind, especially in the third period. 35 shots against, and he made 33 saves for a 9-4-3 save percentage. There also were a bunch of power plays in this one handed out to Detroit. They were 2-for-6 in the man advantage. Meanwhile, the Canucks were 1-for-3. The Canucks had a few power plays at the end of the game, but they were not really able to capitalize except for that Bavillier goal in the second. But either way, if you're a Wings fan or a Canucks fan, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this early bird game. I hope you enjoyed this video. Rolls 99. And bye.